Hello, BookTube. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Play Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and it is time again for the BookTube Spin. A few days ago, Rick McDonnell announced that Round 5 will be coming up very soon. In fact, tomorrow morning, Friday morning, bright and early, he will post the video announcing the number or numbers of the spin. And so, because I've been working on some other videos this week, and Finally got one up yesterday and one up this morning and then a channel trailer right after that. This is going to be a three video day, but I want to get my list out there and published before the spin is chosen because that's the guidelines of the contest. So I've got a random assortment of books. There's a couple of nonfiction. There are a few books set in the South, even a one or two set in Florida, which is where I live. And there's a couple of fantasy, um, a couple of mysteries, I think. Uh, most of, well, at least about half, probably came from my women's fiction shelf. But the common denominator of all of these books is that I can get them on audio through either Hoopla or Scribd or uh, Audible Plus, although I don't know that any of these came off Audible Plus, but I did check. And what's the other one? Overdrive. And one of these actually I can get on CD at my library. So that is what I decided to do. Go with an all audio version because I still have both of my round four books to read. Both of those are books that need to be read in print. And some of you may remember that I ended up with four books for round three because that was the first time he spun twice. Well, not knowing that, I decided I would be an overachiever and I would have two lists. Well, two books times two lists equals four books. Two of them I listened to on audio, one I read in print, and the other one I'm going to need to read in print, and I didn't get it done yet either. So the thought of adding one more sort of need-to-read book, sort of want-to-read book, to my ever-bulging TBR, I, I just couldn't do it right now. And I thought, why don't I just pick out a list of 20 books that I can get on audio and books that I own so that I can maybe potentially um, move some of these books out of my out of my house. Of course, it's only going to be two at a time, but I may just end up keeping the same list. And I've got a couple of others that I can substitute in whenever, you know, one or two get picked off of this list, then I can just add in a couple of new ones. Or I don't know. It That would be kind of boring to do another video. And I love making the BookTube spin videos. So um, I don't know. We'll just make it up as we go along. But uh, let's just go ahead and uh, and start. I think I counted seven or eight of these books are part of series, small series. And most of them are series starters, although one of them is book two in a series that I... Um, have started and one of them is book one but the only other book in the series is book zero so I don't know which one I should read first but I'm going with the one that's on my shelf so um anyway I just pull these from random places you might see a couple of empty spaces up here and uh, around the corner is where I got the nonfiction, and most of the others came from the room in there where I have my women's fiction so these came from around the corner these um are I believe both nonfiction, and I'm not even going to try to tell you the numbers. I will just go back and rewatch this video when I'm typing the description, and I'll number them there, and that's how I'll know what the numbers are. So, the first one is going to be Homer's Odyssey. This is by Gwen Cooper, and this is about a blind cat, and that's all I know. Uh, this is by Florida author Dave Barry, who normally writes a lot of humor. He does write some middle grade books and, and some adult books. Um, I don't know anything about this, but it says, best state ever, a Florida man defends his homeland. So Florida is not my birth state. I was born in Oklahoma, but I have lived here now since 1988 and it's home for me. So I'm going to read that book. Uh, I'm just going to grab as they go and, you know, there's not going to really be any rhyme or reason for the order of things. Now, a lot of these books you may notice um, have unusual titles. I am really drawn to unique titles and I'm sometimes drawn to authors that I recognize and I may not have even read those authors, but I still buy their books. And when I say buy, it's usually 
at library book sales. So anyway, this came from a library book sale, the Florabama Ladies Auxiliary and Sewing Circle by Lois Battle. I don't know anything about that. And again, I apologize for the lighting. I just couldn't get this done any earlier today. Uh, it's been a busy day. I also had book club today and we discussed that book by Laura Dave that won the mystery, Flo mystery thriller Goodreads Choice Award. What was it? The last thing, the last time I saw him, the last thing he said to me, I don't know, something like that. I liked it. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Okay, anyway, this one I've heard mixed reviews on, The Nest by Cynthia Sweeney. There's a middle name there that I'm not going to try to pronounce because I would probably get it wrong. Uh, but um, someone gave me this book. One of Katie's middle school friends, her, uh, her mom is a reader and um, gave me a bag of books one time and I have just never gotten around to reading that. Uh, this is the one that I can get on CD from my library. The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. Louie, Katie's dog, has a bunch of pig toys. And I can hear one in action right now. Uh, Waking Up in Dixie by Haywood Smith. Oh my goodness. I think they don't know I'm back here filming. Give me a second. I don't know if y'all could hear the pig, but I could hear it. <laughs> So, all right, this one I think is maybe Fantasy or Time Travel Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. I think I may have picked this up in our little free library one time, and I brought it home because I thought Katie might want to read it, and she never did, and it's just been sitting on my shelves. So uh, I think it has at least one more in um, as a part of its series. So I don't know if I'll like it or not, but I may as well give it a try. Then this I thought was a duology, but I just looked it up and saw that there's three books. I think this is a YA trilogy. Chicks with Sticks is the name of the trilogy. This book one is called It's a Pearl Thing. It's by Elizabeth, it's either Leonard or Leonard. Leonard. I think it's probably just Leonard, but I don't know. Anyway, um, that looks fun. Mrs. Lincoln's Rival by Jennifer Cheverini. I have read Mrs. Lincoln's Dressmaker, and I don't think that they're a series or anything, but um, she, uh, Jennifer Cheverini does uh, write a lot of historical novels. I've read her whole Elm Creek Quilt series, and I think Mrs. Lincoln's Dressmaker is the only one I've read by her that's not part of that series. And I have this on my shelf, and The Spy Mistress, and a Christmas book. So I need to get uh, at least one of them read this year. I also have a bunch of books by Elizabeth Berg, and I was happy to see that quite a few of them have popped up now on audio, on Hoopla, and Scribd. Back when I first started collecting her books, I could only find two of them on audio, and one of them was abridged. So this, I think, is the very first book I ever picked up by her, because I just love the cover. It's called The Art of Mending, and you might think that's books, but I think it's actually fabric on the cover. This book got some damage, and I don't know... It almost looks like coffee got spilled on it. And I think it was my own fault. I think I'm the one that did it. I don't know, but it got messed up. Anyway, I want to go ahead and read it, and then I may recycle it. I don't know. I might put it in the Lofi Library. It doesn't look too bad from the outside. Um, but Anyway, we'll see. I know my sister already has read it, so I don't need to share it with her. And here's another one that my sister, it's an author my sister has read a lot of. I don't know if she's read this one or not. This is the first book in a duology. The author is Erling Fowler. The book is The Saddlemaker's Wife. I do have this and its sequel, which is called Cardinal Valley or something like that. And um, I don't know really anything about it except that it looks like it's set on a ranch. So that should be fun. This is an author that my mom used to read. I don't know if she ever read this one. The author is Laverle Spencer. The book is That Camden Summer. This, I have no idea anything about it, but I love the cover and the title. It's called Moon Pies and Movie Stars by Amy Wallen. I wish the lighting was better. I'm so sorry that it's not. I just couldn't get this video done any earlier today. Um, I have a bunch of books by Eugenia Price. If you've ever heard me talk about the big windfall of books that we got a few years ago, a lot of them were Eugenia Price books. So I kept one of each of the fiction books, and I think most of the nonfiction, at least some of it. And this is the first book in the St. Simons trilogy, I believe. It takes place in the late 1700s. 
and St. Simon's Island is uh, off the coast of Georgia, I believe. Anyway, this is called Lighthouse. And I think that whole trilogy is on... Oh, that's what I was going to do is tell you where each of these could be found. But anyway, I told you the four choices, so it's it's one of those. Um, this one, I just... I, I love the cover. I found this at a book sale, and I had to pick it up. I think I found a second copy, sent it to my sister. She's already read it, and she said, eh, it was just okay. But I still love the cover, and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna read it. And then I think it was just last year. I was just randomly searching around, and I saw that it was on audio. And it's one of those that, you know, it's just been sitting around on my shelves, and I didn't have any idea that it was on audio. And it's been in the back of my mind ever since then that I need to go ahead and listen to it. I do have another book by this same author that's got a similar cover. It's some, not Mulberry Street, but I don't know, something else that just kind of looks like it. But when I look at it on Goodreads, I don't think they're connected, but I just feel like there's some connection. Maybe they're companion books. I don't know. This is The Tea House on Mulberry Street by Sharon Owens. I think this is a British author. And look at that beautiful cover. This is the beginning of a the third trilogy that I will be reading by Robin Hobb. It is the Tawny Man trilogy. The book is Fool's Errand. I have read... The Assassin's Apprentice trilogy and the Live Ship Traders. So I'm ready for this one. And uh, it's not on Hoopla anymore, or maybe it never was, but it is on Scribd. So I'm glad of that. This one's also on Scribd. I picked this up somewhere because I thought the cover was gorgeous. I have seen this around BookTube, I think, when it first came out. The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. I really don't know anything about it, but it's a gorgeous cover. And so I just, you know, I grabbed it when I saw it. This I may have read before. I'm really not sure. This is by Carl Hyacin, who is a Florida author. This is book two in the Skink series. It's called Native Tongue. A year or two ago, I read the first book, which is called Double Whammy. And I don't even know if I had read that one previously or not. Because way before I ever knew about Goodreads, way before BookTube or any of that, my husband and I listened to a bunch of Carl Hyacin books on audio. And I know we listened to some Skink books, but I don't know which ones. So Skink is a very eccentric character. The premise is that he is a former Florida governor who kind of had a nervous, maybe a mental breakdown or a nervous breakdown of some sort, went off the grid, ran away to the Everglades where he hides out and basically is kind of a vigilante justice maker of environmental causes. That's a lot, but he's just a fun character. And these books are not without swearing. Carl Hyacin can really salty up a book, let me tell you. But the characters are great, and um, I am going to go ahead and, and work my way through the Skink series now from beginning to end. And I think there's a new one, or maybe there's one that's newer, because the last one... Um, that I knew about was a middle grade book that was a Sunshine State winner a few years ago called Skink No Surrender. And how they got around, they how he got around Skink's salty tongue is that the, the boy who is the uh, protagonist would say something to Skink and then he would say that Skink you know, responded with some colorful choice words, you know, that kind of thing, without actually using the words. So I thought that was pretty good. So anyway, it's basically an adult series with that one middle grade book thrown in. And the newest one that I just noticed, I don't know if it's adult or middle grade, but um, anyway, I, I do want to go ahead and continue this series. This is on Scribd, and it's a Florida book. Almost all Carl, Hyac Carl Hyacinth's books have some kind of environmental theme. And this has been sitting up here on my shelf for a while. Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. This is labeled book one. And then there's another book that's labeled zero. And that's all so far. And I think they're from maybe 2013. So I'm not really sure what happened there. But um, I at least want to read that because it's on my shelves. And then <laughs> this book, the reason I have it, I doubt I'm going to like it. But when we were chatting at book club one day, discussing what we might put on our reading list for the next year. Now, mind you, this has been a few years ago now. People were throwing out different books. This one came up, but 
the premise sounds so bizarre. It's a Nutshell by Ian McEwan, and the premise is that the witness to the murder is an unborn fetus. That's all I know. And then the last one looks super fun. The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. This is the first book in the Scottish Bookshop series. And I've never read anything by, by Jenny Colgan that I know of. But I've had this sitting on my shelves and I am eager to read it. So this will be book 20. And uh, I will leave a list down in the comments of all of these books. I'm excited to see which one gets picked. And or or ones. I don't know. He might pick two books. We shall see. Anyway, uh, if you have never heard of the BookTube Spin, check out Rick McDonald's channel. I'll leave it in the description below. And you can post your list of 20 books anywhere on social media. You can even post it on my Goodreads group, Lizzie Face Comfy Corner. And I think there's a channel for it in the Killing Time with Cozy's Discord group as well, if you're a part of that group. But um, this is not a list of 20 that we're going to read. This is a list of 20 books that kind of had a hard time getting around to. That's kind of the idea behind the challenge. And we're just going to read one or two of them, and it's going to be picked randomly by a spinning wheel. That's basically it. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book, and God bless you.